It's becoming a regular fixture. The Junta Munta, a historic site in New Delhi, has always been a rallying point for protests. It's just that these days there are so many more of them. They come here from all corners of the subcontinent. One man I met had traveled a thousand kilometers from the Mathila region in the north of India. He wanted to draw attention to its endemic poverty. There is no job. Per capita income is lowest in national basis. So many malnutritious diseases. We people have to migrate to different parts of India. You do feel like you're in the middle of some kind of political jamboree here. Just walking 100 meters down the road, you pass a whole variety of protests. And yet at the same time, when you talk to these people about their grievances, most of them do seem to have at their heart a sense of economic injustice. The resources of our place is used for replenishing the riches of people. Darjeeling, for example, is known for its tea, for its timber, and yet all of that is extracted from there, and people there are not allowed to participate in the dividends that come out of that. So maybe we hear this talk about the Indian economy booming everywhere, but the question for us is, for whom does it boom? Not for the people we know, not for the people that we are. The truth is that India's economy isn't booming for anyone right now. At its height, it was growing at 8% a year. Now, most analysts reckon the figure's down to about 4%. And that's just not enough to keep a rapidly growing population in work. There aren't any new factories coming in. There is much less construction. Lesser number of people are getting jobs. So because of that, incomes have come down. Harish Damodram is opinion editor at the newspaper The Hindu Business Line and someone who's not surprised by the upsurge in protests here. There was a period when incomes were growing, aspirations were growing faster and when the income stopped growing at the same rate, the aspirations did not fall at the same rate. They have continued to grow. So, so therefore you have this aspirations income mismatch. Someone, say, who drives a cab probably wants a little, little uh, smartphone. It can lead to frustration. People start looking for reasons. Usha green turf, purple orange kind. Shagun Dahwan thinks she knows the reasons for India's economic slowdown. She runs a manufacturing and export business on the outskirts of Delhi. Traditional Indian handicrafts produced in traditional garish colours of turquoise, green and orange. They knock out two million dollars worth of orders here every year. Yet Shagun worries that her profits are down. She's facing tough competition from China. And what really exasperates her, she says, is that it's an age-old Indian problem that stands in the way of her company and others achieving greater success. We have to bribe a lot of people to get work done, to get a particular government thing done, to get a document signed. If you don't bribe, we don't get it for six months or a year, and then we get penalized. All the cost bribe, paying any you know, official, it's, it's get absorbed in the cost of each product. And we become expensive, an expensive exporter. So we get beaten on the prices by China all the time. Do you think these things are getting better? Are you noticing any less corruption? No, not at all. They're not getting better. I would say they're getting a little more worse. They're fixed bribes which we have to pay. The amount is going up. The amount you have to bribe yeah, officials? Yeah, yeah. Earlier, if I have 10,000 rupees, I have to pay 20,000 rupees this year. If my company did better, I would go for a better home in a better locality, best of the cars. You'd like and to buy a better car? Yeah. A Porsche Kaina is my dream car. You want a Porsche? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's my dream car. If you want to spot a Porsche in India, then this is probably the best place to come. I'm in Gurgaon, the new town just outside Delhi, which for many embodies the boom times in India. OK, I haven't actually spotted a Porsche today, but there are plenty of other expensive cars parked here, many of them outside the headquarters of the international companies that chose to base themselves in Gorgown, with its clean environment, its decent roads and good access to the international airport. The trouble is that the amenities at Gorgown are delivered by the private sector. Many of the roads, the cleaning services, even the town's security, it's businesses that provide it. Alok Shri Ram runs a chemical firm here, and he says that private money is no longer able to keep Gorgown running. Unless the Indian government learns to supply proper infrastructure, this town, and indeed the whole country, he believes, will remain economically hidebound. Working in India can be very rewarding and very frustrating. We see a country like China or a, or a city like Shanghai, and then we think, well, why can't Gurgaon be like Shanghai? And what's the answer? 
Kurgaon has developed up to a point very well by private entrepreneurship. I think they've hit now, they've hit a sort of roadblock. Infrastructural issues cause so much frustration. Roads are the single biggest problem. Electricity is another big issue. Through the winters, we have three to four hours of power cuts. And in summer, it can go as high as 12 hours. And obviously, you can't run business in that. This idea of private success and public failure The problem of India's creaking infrastructure is one of the subjects in a new book by the writer Gautaran Das. Its cynical title, India Grows at Night. India grows at night while the government sleeps. And shouldn't India... Das provides an unflinching compilation of the obstacles his country faces. And yet he remains surprisingly upbeat. And that's precisely because of all those protests. He believes they are growing, both in number, but also in effectiveness, and that increasingly they will be driven not by the very poor, but by an expanding Indian middle class. Today, the middle class in India is on the right side of history, pushing huge demand they're creating for delivery of public services. And already this class is about a third of the country, and it will be half in a decade. There's an anti-corruption movement today. There's a movement against violence against women. These movements are movements for public goods, for law and order, forcing the politicians to wake up. I visited the home of the Porsche-loving businesswoman Shagun Dahwan, though not to speak to her, but to the woman who does her housekeeping. Manju comes from the poverty-stricken state of Bihar and has been working as Shagun's maid for six years. She gets paid $100 a month. So I asked if she had any optimism, whether she thought a future India would be one in which people like her had a better life. I am not educated. What more can an uneducated person do? I clean utensils, wash clothes, and stay at the house 24 hours a day. On Sundays, I go to see my children. I dream of having my own house, and I hope that my son might become an engineer someday. I'm working so that I can save enough money for him to study. What I could not achieve, I want that my children will achieve. The rest is in the hands of God. बच्चे को पढ़ाना